we got a lot of rain, but I got the car in here. So I just went ahead and I honed the cylinders. So I just used a ball hone like this. And uh, this being a 2.4 liter, the bore on this, I think is right about two and a half, no, I'm sorry, three and a half inches. So I used the ball hone that's just the next size up. So that's three and three quarter uh, ball hone, 240 grit. So I just sprayed a bunch of uh, lubricant in there, like oil or I used liquid wrench. And you just move it up and down, up and down, and it kind of breaks the glaze, which is not really a glaze so much as it's just a very finely machined surface. And it's really smooth. So you want to kind of get this crosshatch pattern in here to help seat the new rings. So we, get, we went ahead and did that already. So now I'm gonna clean up the deck surface here. And that way, I don't think I have much left to do in the way of cleaning. I think everything else will be pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna use a razor blade scraper to get some of this heavy stuff off. And then after that, I'll use a piece of Scotch-Brite like this. Uh, but you wanna do it by hand real lightly uh, just to get rid of, you know, whatever residue is on there. You don't want to use, uh, I want to see, I pulled one of these aside to show you. So these circular ones that go on like a die grinder or on a drill, you don't want to use these. Uh, it spins too fast and it'll cut too much material out. And when you look at the bottom side, you'll end up seeing aluminum embedded into this Scotch-Brite material. So you don't want to do that. You'll put divots all through it. You won't be able to see it, but they'll be there. So just, I'm just gonna go over it real lightly by hand with this. This won't take any of the aluminum out. And uh, once it's all cleaned up, then I'll drop the pistons in, uh, we'll go from there. So now with the deck surface all cleaned up, we got some tractors over here, making all kinds of noise. With the deck surface all cleaned up, what I'm gonna do, uh, so, to be able to hone these, I had to take that bar that I had coming across here that was holding the engine up. I had to take that out. So right now I have a jack under the oil pan just to hold the engine up so I could do that. So what I need to do, I'm going to put this first piston in right now just to get it in so that it's out of my way so I can put the bolts back here so I can get that bar across here, get the engine hanging again because we need to get the oil pan off to be able to put all the pistons in, get everything, uh, get the rods all hooked up. So I'm gonna put this piston in first right now, and I can put these bolts back in because my um, ring compressor is gonna go right around here and I don't want it in the way of where these, the chain and everything's gonna go. So I'll get that one dropped in. So right now I've got that crank journal is all the way to the bottom. That way I can run that piston all the way in. And then I can get this hooked back up. I can take the oil pan back off and then we can, <clears throat> I can, uh, I can proceed with the rest of them. So, alrighty. Okay. So getting ready to put the second piston in here. Once you get your ring gaps, uh, set according to the instructions and where they're supposed to be, which I've got these ones set up. I'm going to go ahead and put the ring compressor on here. And this is the kind of ring compressor you want to use unless you want to buy a really expensive one. But this one will work well, they're cheap. It's kind of a wrinkle band kind of thing. Uh, what you don't want to use is the ones that are like a spiral. It's kind of like a thin, kind of thin piece of metal that like rolls up around the piston and it has like this bent keyway thing to tighten it. Yeah, just, if you have one of those, just take it and throw it right in the trash. It's, it's never gonna work for this. These are cheap and they work really well. Uh, there are better ones but you're going to pay more money for them. You know, again, you get what you get. But with these, um, it works pretty good. So it, it's adjustable. Of course, you can make it fit. And then it's got a fine fine tuner adjuster kind of thing over here. So you can basically fine tune it to fit exactly the tension that you want. So anyway, what I like to do is set it up so that this clamp or the red, the center of this, is right in line with the piston rings. If it's too high or too low, it it won't put even pressure on all the rings. And so then some of them will start to pop out. 
So we'll just slap this thing on here. Let's see, we want to have it. So I want the opening to be on the side. And I want to make sure that, so you can see there, the pressure or the, the, the center point. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see on here. The center point is right across the middle of the rings. And that way you will get the most even pressure as you apply it, put it on there. Yep. Okay. And then you got to check it, make sure it's straight. See, that is not straight. That's crooked, so I have to do it again here. Sometimes you gotta do it a few times to get it sitting, sitting the right way. Okay. Now, if you look underneath there, you should be able to see that no part of the ring is protruding outside the piston. And then you can just knock that thing right in there. And that's about it. So I need to put some oil on here first. So I should have done that first, but I'm kind of just showing you what to do here. So I'm going to put some oil on here and then we'll plop it in there. I forgot to mention, we got to put the bearing in. So before you put the bearing in, make sure you wipe this surface out here. So make sure this is clean, no oil on here. And then when you put the bearing in, just line up the, the tab over here. And just push the bearing in. But yeah, you don't want to put any oil underneath here. The bearing doesn't spin inside the rod normally. If it does, you have a spun rod bearing, and that's no good. We don't want that. So no oil in there. So now I'll put some oil on the bearing. Okay, good enough. Now we'll go ahead and slap it in. So uh, use a rubber mallet to tap it in. You can also use a regular hammer. Just use the wooden handle or whatever you got. You can tap it in that way. So we'll just tap this in like this. So you want to make sure that the, com the ring compressor is seated flush against the block. really just that simple now we'll go underneath and we will connect the old uh, connecting rod to the crank okay so you can see where our where our rod is in comparison to the journal there and that's because the engine the engines tilted slightly towards the firewall and so that rods hanging towards the back of the engine so what I can do I've got the harmonic balancer here or the crank pulley on here so that I can turn the crankshaft. And it helps if you have somebody up above to kind of guide the piston down. I'm doing this by myself, so it takes a little bit longer, but so I'm gonna roll this around. Okay, so my phone died. So while it was charging, I just went ahead and finished the rest of these. So I'm gonna, I just put number four in, so I'm going to finish up what I was showing you on cylinder two with cylinder four. So I just put it in, the crankshaft is at the bottom, so I'm going to push it down. No, not all the way, I'm just going to push it a little bit, and then I'm going to rotate the crankshaft from the bottom up to meet the journal, or I'm sorry, the, I'm going to rotate that, that crank journal up to meet uh, the bottom of the rod. So we go underneath here, I'll show you what I mean. OK. 
Okay, so here's where we were when my phone died. Okay, so you can see the rod is up there and it's, it's to the one side, again, because the engine is leaning towards the back. So we've got the crank pulley here. So I'm gonna use the crank pulley to turn this crankshaft so that the journal goes up and meets up with the, the rod there. It's gonna be a little more difficult now because we got the resistance of three more pistons. It's not too bad. Okay, so now if you look in here, so you can see it's almost there, but there's a little gap, probably probably a half inch between the bearing and the journal there. So now I'm gonna push down on the piston a little bit more to seat it against the journal there. Up, down, up, down. So now I can push this the rest of the way down. There we go. I can feel it meet up against the journal. So now I'm gonna go underneath and make sure that it's against the journal uh, square. Make sure it's sitting on there. Okay, so now, yeah, see it's sitting on there nice. You can see there's there's no gap between it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up on top again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on the piston as I rotate the crankshaft here, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the crankshaft down and keep pushing the piston down. But this way, you know, that, um, that rod will just follow the crank journal all the way down until it bottoms out. And you'll feel it when it bottoms out. So I'll see if I can do this on camera here. I gotta get my, my mount here. So I can feel it bottomed out. You can go both ways with it. So you can, you know, raise the, you can feel it move, you know, with the crankshaft. And that way you'll know that you're, you're on our good and solid. And then we'll put our cap on. Okay, so now we're gonna line up a little, a little tang there on the bearing with the tang on this bearing. So that way that's how you know which side it goes in. And uh, just put it on there like that, and then put your bolts in. So I can't do that with the camera, so. And just snug it. Like, I didn't torque any of these yet. They're just snugged. So I'm going to come back through and torque them. Okay, so the next part of this, we're going to torque down those uh, rod bolts. So the spec on that is 18 foot-pounds, okay, and then 100 and yeah 100 degrees so 18 foot pounds and then go 100 degrees so i'm going to use a little angle thing like this but if you don't have that you can just go 90 degrees plus 10 degrees uh, not too difficult to do so i'm going to torque those down and then we'll probably start working on the oil pan i guess rod bolts are all torqued up now so i'm gonna go ahead and put the oil pan back on i'm gonna use this victor reigns all-purpose coop but you can use permatex or whatever you want uh, there's no gasket for this it's just the goop so get that on there get the oil pan back on and i'll start working on these uh timing chains and stuff okay so update at this point i put the oil pan on and i just ran the uh the bolts in finger tight and I just kind of let it sit for about an hour and a half, let the goop set up. Uh, then I went through and torqued them down. So at this point, I've got the oil pans back on, just fully torqued in, got the starter back on. The starter probably didn't need to come off, uh, but I didn't know whether it did or not, so I took it off anyway. And I just wanted it out of the way, um, but probably didn't need to come off. 
So heads up on that. And uh, not sure what else I've done here. I think that's about it. Got the new exhaust manifold bolted up on here. So the head's pretty much ready to go on. Uh, my old manifold was cracked in two places there. You can see two really gnarly cracks. And this O2 sensor was doing absolutely nothing. If you can see in there, it is, yeah, maybe there you go. It's completely blown apart. I never got a code on it though, which is really strange, but I'm sure it was no good. So new manifold. So the head's ready to go on. And then we'll do the, the chains and all that stuff. I think anyway, I think I've got everything else ready to go. Anything down here worth mentioning? So the, the alignment on these, you can see where they are. So that one's at 12 o'clock. This one over here, the alignment is at six o'clock. And then we got this one here also at six o'clock. So I, I'll have to go back and check, but I think that's where it should be uh, when you put the head on. And then most of these, I think these were 89 inch pounds on this one, 106 inch pounds on these other bolts here. Um, I can't remember about this little, this little thing here. And then these were, I think 37 foot pounds. That bolt, and then that one up there for the sprocket. And these were also, I think, 89 inch pounds on the tensioner, but I'm not sure, but you, you might want to check that. Anyway, so I think we're ready to put the head on now. Mm -hmm.